Hey guys, I'm Nate. Welcome back to the workshop. Metal plating is a fun and relatively easy project that you can do at home with some easily available supplies and chemicals. Metal plating is a process by which one metal is chemically bonded to the surface of another. This can be used to change the appearance, electrical conductivity, or corrosion resistance of a material. The purpose of today's video is to learn an easy do-it-yourself method for both copper and nickel plating. We'll start with the copper plating. Here's what we'll need for that process. Some distilled water, some copper sulfate, a piece of copper pipe, and an old cell phone charger. It's possible that this experiment will work just fine with tap water, but it's best to eliminate any unknown minerals and chemicals, so that's why we're using distilled water. This root kill product I think is the cheapest way to get copper sulfate in any sort of pure form. It's sold in most hardware stores. Always be sure you're wearing gloves when handling this stuff because it can be pretty irritating to the skin. This is just a scrap of copper pipe. Pretty much any piece of scrap copper will work just fine. The old cell phone charger is an AC to DC adapter. It takes in anywhere between 100 and 240 volts and has an output of 5.9 volts at 0.375 amps. As our first step, let's measure off two cups of our distilled water into a glass jar and then let's heat that up in the microwave. There we go, now we've got our water heated up nice and hot. It's not boiling, but it is quite warm. So let's measure off one and a half ounces of our copper sulfate crystals and mix our crystals into the water. We can use glass, plastic, or I'm using bamboo, but we don't want to use anything metal to stir this up. There we have it. Our copper sulfate crystals are almost entirely dissolved into our water. Moving on to the next step, let's prep our power adapter. We don't need the part that plugs into a cell phone, so let's clip that off and split the wires. Now with our wires split, let's strip the ends about an inch and a half. With the wires stripped, let's attach alligator clips one to each end. Making sure that the ends of our alligator clips are not touching each other, we can plug in our cord. One of these is the negative lead and one is the positive. To test which is which, let's dip the tips of the clips into our copper sulfate solution. We can see that the alligator clip with the black lead has become coated with copper on the tip. So that's the side that will attach our metal that we want plated. With the two leads identified, let's unplug our cord while we prep our metals to be copper plated. To start out, let's try using a regular quarter and see if we can get that to take a nice copper coating. Before we start dipping it into the liquid with electricity running through it, we need to clean and prep the surface so it's completely free of any dirts or oils. Let's clean this quarter in two stages. First, I've got some very fine steel wool and I'm just gonna scour over the entire surface of the quarter, every little bit of it, to try and clean it off. Then to make sure I've got all of the grease removed, I've got some grease removing soap and I'll try and wash down the quarter really well. I'm also wearing gloves, so any grease that's on my hands will not get transferred onto the quarter. You can see that our quick buffing has made our quarter a fair bit shinier. Same thing on the back. There we go, with the surface of our quarter nice and buffed, let's take our soap and really try and clean all of the greases and oils off of it. Our quarter is prepped and ready, so now let's attach a piece of copper to our positive lead and then the coin to our negative lead. Now once we plug in the cord, we should be able to dip the coin down into the liquid and a copper plating should start to appear pretty quickly. Just as a first test, I'm going to dip the quarter down in and then pull it out after only about two seconds. Let's see if it does anything. One, two. You can see it's already started to get a little bit of a tint around the edges. So that's going pretty fast. Let's put it back in, but leave it for a little bit longer. One, two, three, nine, ten. Boom, look at that. That is a quarter coated in copper. Now one thing is often right where the lead is biting into it, there will be a little spot where the plating isn't very even. So I'm gonna move the lead to the other side of the quarter and then we'll dip it back in. This time I think we'll try leaving it in for 20 or 30 seconds. I'm gonna turn it around as well so that the other side of the coin is facing the copper pipe some of the time. There we go, look at that. That is a coin with quite a bit of copper plating it. We have a nice shiny copper colored quarter. Let's rinse off the quarter and see if we can buff that so it's a little bit shinier. We've got our steel wool, let's lightly buff our copper and see if it brings out any shine. 
Buffed with steel wool, that looks pretty good. Let's also try using a little bit of brass polish to see if it will bring out the shine just a little bit more. Ooh, you can see it's definitely doing something. Now, maybe if I used a polish that was specifically designed for copper, we would get an even better look, but brass is mostly made of copper, so I think the brass polish is working pretty well. That is looking good. That is one shiny copper quarter. You should see a color comparison between a regular colored quarter and a copper colored quarter. All right, I really liked how the quarter turned out, so now I want to try doing the same thing with a nickel and a dime, so I can just have a whole copper colored set. There we have it. I think our copper plating is working out wonderfully. So now let's move on to how to do your own nickel plating. Nickel is a bright silvery colored metal that is very corrosion resistant. So if you have something that's plated in nickel, it will often stay looking nice and new, even if it's been around for quite some time. For our nickel plating, we need even fewer supplies than we did for our copper plating. We've got some distilled white vinegar and some guitar strings. Now you can see down at the bottom that says that these guitar strings have a pure nickel wrap. The only local sources of pure nickel that I could find was the wrap around these guitar strings, and sometimes you can find pure nickel welding rods. If you're doing this, make sure you get some that say they have a pure nickel wrap. Other strings may say that they are nickel, but unless they say pure nickel on them, it's probably a nickel plated steel. That won't work very well. So to start, let's just pour off some white vinegar into our glass jar. With our vinegar poured into a jar, we now want to add a small dash of our salt. This will help the vinegar be a little bit more conductive. This is sea salt, but you can really be using any type. Now we need to remove the pure nickel wire from the steel core of the guitar strings. You can see that the pack comes with several different thicknesses of guitar strings. Let's start with the thickest one. If you look very closely as I begin to unwind this wire, you can see that there is one wire wrapped very tightly around a second wire. With these guitar strings, the outer wire is our pure nickel, and the inner wire is a nickel-plated steel. We now want to unwind all of our nickel wire from off of the inner core. It's a pretty simple process. Let's just grab the nickel end, secure the rest of the wire, and start pulling. It should unwind. Once we get about six to eight inches down, let's just clip off the core wire and do the same thing again until we've pulled the whole thing off the guitar string. That's pretty good right there. We can toss out the end of our guitar string. We won't need it. Now we want to divide our nickel wire into approximately two even pieces. All right, now we've got a good length of nickel wire. Let's just wrap this around our fingers a few times a lot of times, actually. Just keep wrapping until there's only about a foot of the wire left unwrapped. There we go, we now have this nice bundle of nickel wire. It's got a tail about a foot long. So let's squish down our bundle. And then let's use that tail to wrap it all closed. There we go, one nice little nickel stick. Let's just do the same thing with the other bit of wire. Now that we have our two bundles of nickel wire, we want to attach one of them to each of our alligator clips that we were using before. At this point, we want to lower the alligator clips down into our vinegar until almost all of the nickel is submerged in the vinegar. I'll also use a little bit of electrical tape to hold them in place so they don't accidentally bump into each other. Now shortly after plugging in our charger, we see bubbles starting to form on the negative end. You'll want to watch this solution and check up on it every few hours. The nickel wire will actually begin to dissolve from the end that isn't bubbling. After eight to 10 hours, you may need to replace it with a new string. By that time, you may also be able to see a slight change in color as your vinegar changes from clear 
to a slightly turquoise green. Now we need to plug in our charger and let this sit for 24 to 48 hours. Now here I've got a solution that I let sit for about 24 hours and in the process of doing so, it dissolved its way through two of those nickel guitar string wraps. So now that we have our solution of what's called nickel acetate, we can begin to use this to plate nickel onto copper. Nickel doesn't do a very good job of sticking to most metals, but it will stick to almost anything with a copper base. So that's copper, brass, or bronze. We successfully coated three silver colored coins in copper. Now let's see if we can take a copper colored coin and turn it silver. The process is basically the same, except that instead of using a copper pipe, we just use another one of our nickel wraps attached to the positive end. Attach it to our cleaned and polished penny. You can see it's starting to react very quickly. I haven't dipped the penny all the way in, so we should get a nice dividing line right across it to see the difference. Beautiful. That is a shiny half silver penny right there. Now let's turn it around and coat the other side so we just have a completely silver colored penny. You can see it's currently bubbling more on the spot that wasn't already plated in the nickel. It's also bubbling quite a bit around the alligator clips, which I think I'm turning back to silver colored. That's looking good. The nickel goes on very smoothly. And so if you had a shiny object going in, you usually have a shiny one coming out. You probably should not try metal plating any utensils that you're going to be using for eating, just because if the metal isn't bonded properly, it could come off and, you know, if you have a nickel or copper allergy, it's just not a great idea. But I am going to try it on the spoon, not to eat with, just because I think it will look cool on the nice curved surface. Can't really see through the liquid. No orange color comes up out of the blue very well. Get anywhere? Well, we got a little bit around the edges of our spoon. That's interesting. This is stainless steel, and it really doesn't pick up much color very well. It's almost like it resists staining. Not nearly as fast as the coins. Those just those go almost immediately getting somewhere though. We've got copper building up around the edges. I even hit this spoon with some light grit sandpaper to help the copper stick better, but I think it's just going to wipe right off with a paper towel. There we go. I think our stainless steel spoon is about as coated in copper as it's going to get. All right, let's see if this will stay at all. <laughs> oh, not very much. Little bits down at the tip stayed. Most of that is just coming right off. Just for kicks and giggles, let's see if we can nickel plate the copper on the end of our stainless steel spoon. Something is definitely happening. Lots of bubbling going on down there. Well, I think that pretty well worked. We had our copper all built up on the back of the spoon now and it's turned back to being gray color. It's just sort of a weird mottled gray. Now it doesn't look like a new spoon. It looks like this spoon has maybe been kicking around for quite a few years and just getting eaten up on the edge. Oh, and it's not sticking either. Look at this, you can see it's peeling right off. That's the copper is delaminating from the stainless steel. But even though I thought I did a very good job of cleaning this stainless steel spoon, it does not want to stick to it at all. There you have it, easy do-it-yourself copper and nickel plating. Like I said before, nickel doesn't stick to everything, but copper does stick to quite a bit. So if you have something you want nickel plated, you can copper plate it first and then clean it and transfer it into the nickel bath. Something else that's good to know is these liquids shouldn't really go bad very quickly. If you've got a lid, you should be able to put that on your jar, store it away, and then pull it out and use it again when you're ready for your next plating project. If you've got any great ideas of things you think will look good plated in either copper or nickel, let us know down in the comments and we might just try it out. Thanks for joining us for this video today and remember to come gear yourself up with hats, shirts, and other cool merch at thekingofrandom.com. See you there. So now we have just so much stainless steel. Does not like to stain. <laughs>